Hey, y'all. I know it's been a minute. But there was something on my heart <clears throat> that I wanted to share. You know, success is not easy. It's hard. And it's not so much hard to attain because anybody can get a skill set. They can learn the skill set. They can be taught. They can be mentored. You can go to college. You get knowledge. You get education. And you can, you know, learn, study your craft. But success is hard because you got to deal with people. And you got to know who you are in order to deal with people. If you have low self-esteem, like we was t talking about in group today, you know, you kind of base your opinions on what other people think or, you know, how they perceive you. When the only person you need to pay attention to how they perceive you is God, your creator. So it's hard when you care about what people, other people think or what other people say. Now, there are some people in your life that, you know, you look up to, you know, your mentor. So yeah, those, you know, constructive criticism, those that can speak into your life and inspire you to be better and stuff like that. Um, those you can, you know, pay attention to what they say. You know, they pushing you to greatness, you know, tough love, you know, they're going to tell you the truth where everybody else ain't going to either say nothing or they're going to tell you a lie. So yeah, you pay attention to that. But you can't pay attention to everybody. Last night in um, Bible study, we were supposed to be talking about prayer, but God came in and did a shift. Um, there was some scriptures that was read and God overtook the atmosphere. And we ended up talking about self-righteous and jealous and, you know, all those type of um, emotions that people have. And they come from people, you know, you know, if you're a successful person, you're going to have some people that are jealous. Now, I do mention my haters every now and then, because if you don't have a hater, you, you, then you not on the Lord's side, because if you're on the Lord's side, you're going to have some haters. You're going to have some people that's coming against you. But I don't talk about my haters and I don't keep pushing it out there. You know, I'm not so self-righteous that I keep, you know, putting it out there like that. Because I know just as easy as God put me up here, he can make me fall as well. I'm not a self-righteous individual. Everything that God gives me or God does for me, I turn it and give it back to him. And how do I do that? I do it by helping others, by doing for others. He say, the least of these. You know, you got to give back to your community. You got to, you know, you can't get stuff from God and then hoard it. You can't get stuff from God and then get big headed, you know, because like I say, just as easy as you get it, you can fall. So don't be self-righteous. Um, you're going to have some people that's jealous, not because they can't obtain it themselves. It's because they can't have it and they don't believe in their own mind that they can achieve it. They, can, they don't believe that they have the skill set or the gifts or maybe they don't know how you attained it, how you got it. And they don't know, you know, you, they don't want to ask how you got it. You know, they don't want to go through the process. They don't want to go through the course. They just want to take and run. You know, there's that thing called the crabs in the bucket syndrome. You know, you got those that they don't mind getting it and getting out and, you know, succeeding. But, you know, they don't want you to succeed before they do. So they're always pulling you down, pulling you backwards, you know, using your back to climb up and get ahead. And then you pull it. You know, it's always you. You ain't never got to put a lid on a book of the crabs because the crabs is always going to pull the other one down. They always stay in there. You know, one, once in a while, one fall out, drop out. But for the most part, you ain't got to put a lid on the book of the crabs because a crab will always pull another crab down. That's the mentality. There are people that are jealous of your success. And that's not something that you got to take personal. And I say that because I used to be a person that did that. You know, I would feel bad when people, you know, I would hate to call somebody to feel jealous. So I didn't do a lot of things. And then when I found out I got tired of, you know, suffering or whatever, I started doing some things. 
but then I would hide it. Like when I got my first BMW, I got my first BMW and I hid it for, I think like six months. Didn't nobody know I had it unless, you know, they happened to see me driving down the street or whatever, because I knew there were some people in my life, you know, some friends or whatever that was going to be jealous, that was going to feel some type of way. And I didn't like people feeling ill or evil or anything. I didn't want to cause them to feel those negative emotions. So I internalized it. I took it upon myself. But I learned that that's not my fault. You know, I learned that I can't hide the blessings of God or he'll take them from me. You know, God blesses you so that you can show somebody else that he can do it. That that increases somebody else's faith. That increases the faith of the one that wants to know that, you know, not the one that going to sit there and get envious and jealous and want to tear your neck off, pull your hair out your head. They, they, it inspires the true mature individual. But the ones that's immature and you know, sitting up on their soapbox and feel like they can't do it for themselves. They lazy, slothful, don't want to put in the work. Then those are the ones that's going to have a problem with you. Um, then you have those that's sitting in so much mess. They done found themselves in so much iniquity. They doing so much sin. They got hidden sin. They in such a mess to where they've been sitting there stagnant for a long time and they ain't been blessed by God because they're sitting in their own mess. They're not being obedient to God. And then when you get blessed, they feel some type of way. Their mouth is stuck a certain way because God is blessing you and they ain't being blessed because they're sitting in their own mess. They don't want to do what they need to do to clean up their life. They don't want to do nothing, but, you know, for themselves. They don't want to have faith for themselves and do for themselves. So therefore, them the ones that you that you can't get a congratulations for, you can't get nothing from them. Them the ones that, you know, they'll hear about with your your accolades and but they ain't gonna support you. They ain't gonna come support you at all. You know, them the ones that don't want won't even say that they gonna try to make it. There have been people that that things happen. I'd be on, you know, like this last time I was supposed to support somebody. And I totally forgot, but I had a, a date that I needed to take care of because I'm dealing with some issues and I'm trying to, it was like a business meeting to take care of. So I did it. And when I was in the middle of dinner, I realized I was supposed to be somewhere else. I wouldn't apologize to that person because I do want to support that person. I do appreciate, you know, I, I celebrate others, you know, and those that celebrate me, you know, and I, it don't have to be those that celebrate me. I celebrate my brothers and sisters, period. You know, you, I support others. I'm not so stuck up that I can't support nobody else, but you have those that if they ain't being blessed, Maybe that's the reason why they ain't being blessed. They can't support nobody else. So they can't, you know, first of all, come out your own mess. Stop doing stuff that you ain't supposed to be doing. Stop committing that hidden sin, that iniquity. You know, mind your business. Stay in your lane. Clean yourself up. And then before you come out there with your face all jacked up because somebody else done got blessed. You sitting up there looking some type of way, putting yourself further in hell because God don't like that. He really don't. He loves a cheerful giver. I'm a cheerful giver. You know, I put up with a lot of stuff and I celebrate and support a lot of people. But I come to find out that a lot of people don't celebrate and support me. And when I realize that, I just start to back up. Normally, God causes a door to open. I just walk out of one door and into the next. So, success is hard. Everybody looking at me like, it's, it's good, you know, I got it. The car, the house, it's hard because you don't know who's going to cut your head off. You don't know who out here to take from you. You don't know who out here to just, you know, destroy you all simply because they sitting up mad because they, ain't, they, you know, all manner of evil is on the inside of them. It's hard. You know, a lot of people don't know what to do with me. You know, 
a doctor with so many degrees, you know, what can we do with her? You know, that kind of thing. So they don't have no place for me. You know, I try to fit in, you know, here and there. But when I find out I'm not being used, you know, I, I go to the Lord and the Lord releases me. He gives me something else. So I went, there's like, I put it on Facebook. I mean, no, I put it on YouTube channel, my video. I went for prayer about a message that I was to give at another church. And God gave me a release. I wasn't even looking for that. So that let me know that I guess my season is up. So, you know, it's hard because you put so much and you invest so much time into something. And then before you know it, you're off to the next thing. But that's just the way it's supposed to be. You, We get them in. We train them up and we send them out. We don't sit on people. We don't. We don't just sit there and collect people to fill up an offering plate or you know, to sit there and milk off people, to mooch off people, you know, use the mess out of them, squeeze them till you can't squeeze them no more, and then just let them to sit there to be dry. We don't do that. We inspire, elevate people, you know, be the vessels that God uses to elevate people and push them to greatness. That's what we're supposed to do. So I try to push people to greatness everywhere I go. So, because I know God got people pushing me to greatness. And, you know, I share it with everybody. Like I say, success is hard. It's not hard because it's hard to attain. If it's hard to attain, then you try and attain something that you haven't been prepared for, that maybe you're not ready for. And God is yes and amen. What he's going to do is he's going to get you ready for it. He's going to prepare you for it. And you have the opportunity and the choice to make the decision to whether you want to go to the process Go through the process and get prepared for that thing that you desire in your heart. Some of us, there's been many of things of, Lord, that's too much. I don't think I want that. And I, I let it go and go do something else. Some of the stuff we asking for may just be too much. It may be what, what we want to put on our plate, but it ain't what God got on our plate. And then there are things that he wants us to go through because he knows that we're prepared for it, but we ain't ready to move. We feel like it's too hard or whatever. You know, God understands. He ain't going to put on us no more than we can bear. You know, we just, if God sent us to it, he going to bring us through it. We just got to know that God brought us to it. If God didn't bring us to it, that's us. We doing it in the flesh. And the flesh ain't got no strength. You know, the comfort of the Holy Spirit is our strength. If we can't move in the Holy Spirit, we just healing and towing it. I ain't saying you can't make it, but it's hard to make it. It's easier to walk in spirit and in truth. It is easier to walk and get things done that way than to walk in the flesh. So everybody say, you know, you got all the degrees. It was easy to do because I did it in the spirit. In the spirit, I went, I took what God said, take. You know, I got degrees what God said to get degrees in. And I know he did because every degree that he had me get, I'm using for his glory, for his kingdom. So, and he blesses according to me. Now, man, they can't, can't bless me, you know, on my paycheck like God can. And God, they man can't pay me what I'm worth because I'm worth more than any of all that. But God can bless me. God can pay me what I'm worth. You know, so I don't look for man to pay me what I work. That's why I don't work for money. Money works for me. But like I say, success is everybody keep talking about, girl, you got it. You got it going on. You No, no, no. I don't have it like you think I have it. You know, I got to watch, you know, duck and dodge because there are people that smile and talking about they, you know, they for me. But in the background, they not. You know, girl, some of them can't even say congratulations. Some of them can't say nothing. You know, they just stuck because they mad because you getting blessed and they're not. Well, clean it up. Clean up what you're doing. God is not a respect to a person. Whatever you got going on in your life, you need to handle that. And God will bless you. He can give you the desires of your heart. And the thing about that is, is everybody say the desires of your heart? I didn't desire this. 
I my grandfather used to have Cadillacs all the time, but and other than riding in the back seat, you know, as a kid, I never really desired all of this. But I sat in one one day, and I said, okay, I can do this. Next thing you know, God gave me the desire of my heart because it was his desire is what he wanted me to have. And he did good because I love this car. I love it. It does everything I needed to do. And then some. So sometimes God will slap you with a blessing. I had never driven or even sat in a car other than as in the backseat as a little kid. Didn't know what it was. Didn't even know what an ATS was. I'm loving it. So God will give you your desire of your heart, even when you don't even know that you desire it. He gave me something that fits me. That, you know, fits my personality, fits what I need to do. You know, even with the house, you know, and then the commu the gated community, all of that. He gives it. My mind talking about, you know, single mom, I can't afford all this. But God will elevate you. God will give you the increase. That's who you got to seek. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. I see God. That's how I got all of this. So be careful of the people that you supporting and they ain't supporting you. There has been so many times that, you know, even in your tithes and offering, don't support nobody that ain't supporting you because you got to be careful where you plant your seeds. You got to be careful where you sow. Because if you sowing, whether that ground is fertile or not, if that ground is, is disrespecting you, if it's not, yeah, if it's disrespecting you, then it's not fertile to you. So don't be supporting somebody else's vision and they can't support you. Um, Like I said, you got to be careful. I think that's the next thing my rabbi going to teach on. He taught on delusions last Tuesday. But I think we talked about it. He going to teach on tithing. Because like I say, yeah, we believe the Old Testament, 10%. You know, Malachi, 10% over there. But when Jesus came on the scene, he, he became the tithe. That's what he did. He became the tithe. Whatever people needed, that's what he was. He became the tithe. I run around here doing my, my job. I work in mental health. I become the tithe. Whatever they need. I don't do just what they pay me for. If the people need it, whether they pay Medicaid or whoever pays for it or not, I do it. I go sit in court cases with clients and whatever. I don't get paid for that. But, you know, sometimes somebody needs to show somebody sitting in a seat that supports something or support them. Sometimes just showing, looking at somebody in your corner, you know, Sometimes you got to do some things you ain't going to get paid for. At least not paper-wise. God can bless you. So I believe you become the tithe. That's why I ain't too busy worried about no offering plate. And, you know, passing no offering plate. Because I just know that, you know, you become the tithe. Yeah, I do like, just like Jesus did as they did in the synagogues. You know, I run around, I do what I'm supposed to do. But. That's because we know the lights and stuff need to be paid in the, in the sanctuary and wherever we at. If I'm in a in a building, if I'm with a ministry, I'm going to do what the laws and the protocols of that ministry is. But God releases me a lot. He releases me a lot because I'm sitting there and I'm not being used. There's nothing to do. I got too much education. Some of them say I'm overqualified. Like, so I wasn't expecting to be released from this ministry here, but I see what God is doing because he got two doctors there. He don't need two doctors. So he's planning me in my own. And I'm ready to go because I'm tired of sitting around twiddling my thumbs. I love to teach and I can't teach sitting there just being a camera girl or whatever. You know, it gets boring after a while to me because I'm so used to doing stuff. But I was talking to some people, you know, telling how God had blessed me. And I noticed there were some people that say they support me. But they never gave a word of support. They never congratulated or not. And I'm like, whoa. 
So today I just sit back. You know, I've been supporting an individual for a long time. And when you realize that that individual ain't supporting you, making their business grow and edify, basically what that is is disrespect. It's a slap in your face. How you making them grow, but ain't nothing going for you. You know, they can't even support you. They can't even say congratulations. They can't even say, well done, good job, or whatever. So, I want to say, be careful where you sow. You know, success is hard. You're going to find some people that are in your corner. You're going to find some people that's not in your corner. You're going to find some people that you're supporting, but you're going to realize that they're not supporting you. I love ATM. ATM came over and supported me Sunday. I mean, it was a whole posse. We was more than the members. That's support, you know, and we had just done a service. And I was teasing, talking about they come for the chicken. A lot of them left. The only people that got chicken was the ones in my car because I stopped and got chicken. They didn't come for the chicken. They came because they wanted to support. They love the word of God. They come to support me, you know. They come to support one of their sisters in Christ. So I love that. You know who's in your in your corner to support. Now, I said, I talked about the baddest keyboard player in Las Vegas that I know. God is blessing him. So I'm trying to get my calendar together and make sure I go support him because I missed the first one. But yeah, you got to be able to support people. Success knows success. If you find yourself successful and everybody else is ducking, dodging, being jealous and envious of you and you not being self-righteous and prideful and big head and all that, then that means something wrong with them. They can't handle your success. Therefore, you don't need to be around them because them the type of people that will pull your ankles right out from under you. Them the type of people that will cut you off. So, like I said, I just want to jump on here. When you've been an example of truth, when you've been successful, when God is blessing you and people are sitting in their mess or for whatever reason, they're not getting blessed, be careful because them people are not, don't have your best interests at heart. You need to social distance. That's a virus that you need to social distance. Keep yourself away. Keep your, you know, be observant. You know, make sure that, you know, you watching the move because them the type of people that will cut your head off. They will do something to make you fall simply to make them feel better. Instead of coming to you, too much pride. How you do this? How, show me this. Show me that. That's too much pride. So they just feel some type of way because they feel like God ain't blessing them. When the favor of God is on your life and it's not on other people, huh, you the most hated. You know, they hated Jesus. They talked about Jesus. They crucified Jesus. His own. So... Be careful who you're rolling around with. Be careful who you sharing who your success with. Be careful. Just be careful. Because everybody ain't happy for you. Everybody ain't, you know, good job. Everybody ain't patting you on the back. Because they sitting around mad because you've been getting success and they still sitting in their mess. For whatever reason. Naturally, it's hidden sin. Jealous, envy, pride, self-righteousness, doing stuff, sexual immorality. You never know. God will expose it. He'll call it out. The moment you disrespect one of his that's been, that he done blessed, he going to call it out. He going to expose it because touch not thine anointed. Do thy profit no harm. That means you don't disrespect nobody. You don't cause emotional hurt, harm, pain, or danger to any child of God, anyone that's his, simply because he done blessed them, showed favor on their life. He done gave them grace in their life. And you sitting up there looking some type of way. 
you better get yourself ready to handle success. And when you get yourself ready to be able, mature enough to handle success, then that's when you'll be able to be blessed and be successful. And favor will fall on your life. The grace, the unmerited favor of God. So stop being sour mouth and get in your season. Clean yourself up. Do what you got to do. Learn some skills. Stop sitting around doing nothing. You know, talked the other day. You know, the virtuous woman, she's good with her hands. She's blessed in her hands. If, if, if a woman's hands ain't doing nothing, she ain't blessed. First of all, she got to fear the Lord. Instead of running around here trying to take off somebody else's head and trying to steal from somebody. That's a whole nother situation I found out about that I got going on. How you going to steal from somebody i got some elder abuse that i'm i'm dealing with right now all i'm doing is just waiting for the, the word give me the word and i'm gonna have that stuff locked up lock stock and barrel because you don't you don't do people like that all because you need to pay your rent they going up on your rent so you're gonna do some trifling stuff like that mm -mm. no let me get off of that I don't believe in using other people to glorify my own household. Mm -mm. God gave me the activity of my lambs. He gave me education. He gave me a mind. He gave me the will. He gave me a brain to learn how to do things. He gave me a job. He gave me a career a position. He gave me every tool that I need to be blessed. I ain't got to take it or steal from nobody. And to watch somebody do that to people, especially elderly people. Oh, my grandmama say, she used to say, make my butthole want to dip a snuff. All I'm doing is waiting for the word. I don't want to step in the flesh. I'm just waiting for the word. And I'm going to have that. I'm going to have that so locked up. And doing it just because it ain't going to bless me at all in no way, shape, form, or fashion. Because right is right. I just stand for justice. Justice. Anyway, like I say, I'm going to get off of here. Um, a lot of people don't want to be successful because of the attitude that they get from other people. And if you're too scared to be blessed by God, that's why you're not being blessed. You got to just go on and be blessed and give God the glory. He deserves that. He deserves glory. If your life ain't glorifying God, that's the reason why you're going through what you're going through. That's the reason why you got, you know, your environment is the way it is. Because you're not glorifying God in it. I live to wake up every day to glorify God. If I don't do nothing else in my life, I want to say every day that I want to glorify God in everything that I do. That's what I live, I, that air that I breathe. That's all I want to do because God has been good to me. Not just COVID, not just taking me out of sexual molestation, not just elevating me, not just blessing me as a single mom. God has been good. If he ain't do nothing else, he's already done enough. God is truly good to me. And I know he can be good to anybody. I just want to share him, period. Just share him. And I ain't talking about he been good to me when everything is up. When I didn't have, when COVID, the pandemic, everything, God kept me. He protected me. Me and my household, God was good then too. God was good when I was going through and he good when I'm not going through. God is good all the time. And yes, all the time he's good. There ain't nothing else. He's sovereign. He's just good. I can't explain it no other way. He's just good. So to be sitting up with my mouth frowned up mad because you got something that I don't have. No, that don't make no sense. That's a waste of time, a waste of life. That's something you can't get back. Only God can redeem the time. Don't waste time. Get yourself together. You know, for a long time, all these degrees, you know, I never really put it to, you know, to work for me. 
And I found out it wasn't supposed to work for me. I take these degrees and use it to bless other people. And that's how it's working for me. So I ain't sitting around blessing everybody else. Everybody else in my pocketbook getting hundreds and zeros and zeros upon zeros from me. And I can't do for myself. Well, when I stopped that, I found that I was giving away a whole Cadillac. So that's what I'm saying. You know, bless other people. When you learn, when you start putting in for yourself and stop being mooched on and letting people use you and settling for less, then that's when you're going to come up and be blessed, be favored. Because stop depending on some other source and using God as your resource. I made God my source, not my resource. I ain't sitting around, wandering around, depending on no man. Or whatever. I ain't saying that, you know, I ain't got one. Matter of fact, I have a, a man in my life that loves me and I know that he loves me. I, I, I know that he loves me. It ain't no question about it. I know that he loves me. But I ain't sitting around waiting on him to give me nothing. I ain't sitting around waiting on him to do, do nothing for me. I'm just not. I'm waiting on God to do everything that I need to do. Because God is infinite. He's everlasting. Anything on this earth going to pass away. So why I want to put all my trust and everything in a man? Not saying I can't trust a man. Not saying I can't submit to a man. But my belong, everything goes to God. Everything goes to him. To hold and keep me and band everything that I have together. My faith belongs to him. That's where you got to put your faith at. Stop worrying about, you know, trying to, single women, stop worrying about trying to be with a man. Then men come and go. You know, you smell good one day, he smells the smell of another woman, he gone with that one. You know, they change. They, you know, that's how, that's how we're habitual criminals. You know, habitual people. You know, we just go with the flow. Some of them ain't got no discipline. Women the same way. So one minute is good, the next minute, you know, it's something else, you know. Change colors, you know, change it just like you change your purse or whatever. Put your trust and your faith in God. Put in something stable, a foundation. You ain't got to worry about nothing else. When you're too busy chasing around, chasing, you know, some of us are just addicted to want to be married. We always getting married. We always getting engaged. We always trying to be married. And come, before you know it, ain't something that happened, we ain't married. We waiting to get married. What you waiting for? That man to make that decision? Obviously, something's wrong. If y'all ain't done it, something's wrong. There must be something in the mist. Something in between it. That'll tell you right there, it's unequally yoked. You ain't supposed to do it. Because when God puts a thing together, it's liberty. It just happens. There ain't no question. There ain't no doubt. You just do it. It flows. Everything in my life flows. When I find a hiccup somewhere, it gets my attention. Oh, okay, I need to stop doing something. Like, my finances get hit, it get my attention. My finances got hit the other day, it got my attention. There were some things I stopped sewing into. There were some things that I stopped doing because I, was, I found out I was connected to some things that wasn't right. So I let it go. And everything is flowing again just the way it's supposed to be. So success is hard because of your self-esteem got to be, you got to have self-confidence in yourself because when the people come and the persecution come, you got to be able to handle it in the rejection. You got to be able to handle what they say. If you got to listen to them in the first place, I just throw up the hand and keep on pushing because they mad because they ain't got what you got. Now, if they come at me, you know, wanting to know how and help them, I have no problem. None whatsoever. You know, help my brother and sister get up. Or do whatever they need to do. But when you have those come up there rolling their eyes and can't congratulate you, can't do nothing, no, I stop supporting. I stop doing all of that. So, you know, what's the sense of me watering, planting and watering in your yard and I ain't going to get reaped none of the harvest. That's killing me. If I'm planting corn and weed in your field, 
and you never support me, I'm going to starve to death. Just saying. Anyway, I just wanted to come on here for a moment of truth and just let y'all know, you know, success is hard only because of the people that you got to deal with. You got to prepare yourself, prepare your mind and your heart to deal with persecution. If you can't handle persecution and rejection, you ain't never going to have nothing. You ain't never going to be nothing because you always going to have somebody that's going to speak negative against you. Or you always going to have somebody that's going to treat you negative. You always going to have somebody that you thought was in your corner until you get blessed. Then all of a sudden they got a problem. Some of them got temper tantrums. Some of them need to grow up. Some of them just need to fix their own self and do what thus says the Lord. When you walking in truth, everybody going to hate you because your very presence is conviction. Just you walking in the room, they convicted. You ain't said nothing, ain't looked at them, ain't did nothing. But your presence is conviction because you doing everything that you know to do, but thus said the Lord. And when you walk around with that spirit and you convicting everybody, people don't want to deal with you. They don't want you around because they don't want to, they don't want to feel that conviction. And then you have those that do, you know, they, they break down and they repent and, you know, you walk with the people. But for the most part, when you walk into a room and you convict people, you get, they come at you and everything. You got to sit there, learn to sit there and wear the devil out. You don't let them run you nowhere because you in the right. You doing what you're supposed to do. Ain't nothing wrong with you having your credentials, walking in truth, doing what you're supposed to do. But let the enemy tell it. The enemy will make it like you something wrong with you for sitting there going through a course and doing what you're supposed to do to get ordained and doing everything the right way. Something wrong with you because you did everything the right way. Meanwhile, they're coming as a robber and a thief. They don't want to come the right way because truth ain't in them. The love of God ain't in them because the word of God ain't in them. But when the word of God is in you, you're going to stand for some opposition. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be hated. You're going to be talked about. They talked about Jesus. You're on the right path. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to jump off of here. I just wanted to let somebody know that, look, success is hard. If you can't handle persecution and rejection, you better go sit down somewhere. It ain't even worth it for you to get your blood pressure up. Just go on and, you know, live that mediocre, slothful life or whatever you're going to do. Because people are going to come at you and they're going to come at you hard. Simply because you're doing what thus saith the Lord. Simply because God blesses you and because he chooses to bless you. Not nothing you did yourself. They mad because he blessing you and not blessing them because they not lining up. You know, some of them got God, you know, they got the gifts because they come out without repentance, but their lifestyle is jacked up. They struggling because they ain't lining up. Therefore, God can't bless no mess. He won't bless no mess. So I encourage y'all to be successful, to build your, your self-esteem up, to build your self-confidence up, to glorify God. To do whatever it is that you need to do to glorify God. To have the favor of God running all over your life. To be a blessing to others. And give him all the glory. Because you're going to need to man up and woman up. Because the ones that's hating. They're going to they hating because they ain't God. They persecuting because they ain't God. And scripture says blessed are those who are persecuted. So if you want to be blessed... You got to go through the persecution. It comes together. That's scripture. That's word. You can't separate one from the other. So if you want to settle in life for the mediocre things in life, then you go ahead. But don't complain when you want to be blessed and you want the favor of God and they coming against you all manner of evil, trying to take your head off, trying to destroy you because they're not being blessed because they ain't successful. You know, the crabs in the bucket trying to pull you back down because they trying to be a, they trying to be the HNIC. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta have some backbone. If you're going to be successful, you gotta have some backbone. If you're going to be a child of God, a real child of God, walking the walk, talking the talk, walking in truth, 
you got to have some backbone because the enemy is going to reject. He's going to wear you out. And if you don't have no backbone, you're going to be wore out. You're going to be defeated. Don't get in this race unless you know you're going to put on the armor. You don't put on the armor to go to a ballet. You put on the armor to go to battle. It's spiritual warfare. You got to battle against all kind of evil a manner, a mannerisms, evil emotions. You got to battle because people don't like you when you're successful. People don't like you when you're doing it for real. When you're walking in truth for real. People don't like you. That's a delusion. Like I say, my rabbi was teaching on delusions on Tuesday. Delusion is one of the biggest delusion in the church is that they support you. They don't. They support you in that offering plate. A lot of them don't support you. They support you sitting in a chair behind them. They don't want you to elevate. They don't want you to do nothing. They just let you sit there to make them look good because they got an entourage. They don't want you to be pumped up. They don't want you to preach. They don't want you to pump you for it. I sat for four years in a seat and was never used until the last year. And that was to teach two Bible studies. People will sit on you because they see you walking in truth. They don't want the words that's coming out your mouth because it's convicting to them. Like I say, I'm going to get off of here before I start a rant. And it's getting too dark anyway. Um, I got to go pick up my mini-me from a rehearsal here in a minute, I believe, unless somebody going to bless me and bring her home. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to come on here. Don't be scared to be successful. Don't be scared to walk in spirit and truth. Don't be scared to do what thus said the Lord the right way. Just because everybody else doing, you know, things that they ain't supposed to do, that don't make you have to be fall in line with them. Do what God told you to do. Be blessed. And be highly favored with God. You can do that. That's just a cliche for a lot of them that's running around here buying cars or getting cars and their credit cards are screaming and everything. If he blessed you and, you and, you know, God, the gifts of God maketh rich and they addeth no sorrow. That's what this is. That's what I'm living in. Peace that surpasses all understanding. So if God is blessing you like that, be blessed. Care less what anybody else say. Don't get a hearty spirit you all you want to deal with them. You know, whenever they repent, they want to come and learn and help you help. You help them. Forgive them or whatever. But don't sit there and do without just because you don't want nobody to be persecuting you, feel some type of way or treat you any kind of way. Anyway, y'all stay blessed.